Hi, I'm Nicole Scott from Netbook News. Today we're going to be reviewing a smartphone in a league of its own, the Samsung Galaxy Beam. This mid-range smartphone hit the streets with a 1 GHz dual-core ST Ericsson Nova Thor U8500 processor running a Mali 400 GPU. So think Samsung Galaxy S2. It's got 768 megs of RAM and 8 gigs of internal memory, four of which are eaten out of the box. So lucky, it comes with a micro SD card slot. The phone has a 4-inch LCD display with a resolution of 480 by 800 and has shiny, vivid colors and very good viewing angles. It has a respectable 400 nits of brightness, which is above average, and has a 233 pixel density, which is quite good. The projector is 15 lumens and obviously works best in complete darkness. We did a little playing around and watching a two-hour movie will leave you with a little bit of juice left on your phone. Luckily, the Beam comes with an extra battery pack. So let's play a little something and take it for a spin to show you exactly what we're talking about. So we're standing about 12 feet back from the wall and this is about a 10-foot projection and really it doesn't look half bad. So if we were just to walk closer, to kind of show you, like, I'd say that's probably about seven feet across. The color saturation still looks pretty good. I mean, really not too bad, but the closer you get, you can see here at about 30, 30 inches, that's a really high, a really high color saturation. That looks really fantastic. But you can see that if I continue to walk back, it's probably about seven feet across. That still looks pretty good. So I mean, in a completely dark room, you have a lot of options with this projector, including hand puppets. <laughs> cool. So here we are in the meeting room and I have a presentation from Toshiba. Let's just say I'm a product manager and I wanna get going on this. And so what I can do is I can hit the projector button on the side one long press will actually engage the projector and what appears first is you can adjust the focus and then rotate the projection and you can actually enable quick pad. I'll demo this in just a second. So you can see up on the, up on the wall that I have the, the start screen. So adjust the focus. You kind of have to guess it. You're like, eh, now it's too fuzzy. All right, so I'd say that that's pretty good. All right, hit okay. And then we have, the, we have the, uh, the, the brief up. Now the annoying thing is, is that on the phone, it's not, it's not vertical. So you actually have to rotate everything sideways, right? Which is, which is kind of annoying. So if I just hit the projector button once on the side, I can enable the pad mode. So now what this is, it's, it's a pen. So what, what we can do, we can adjust the thickness of the lines. So let's make it fairly thin. And then, okay, and then let's choose the pen. And now we can draw on the screen. So we can say this is super important here. We really like this. Uh, this here, no, everyone pay attention to these things here. They're super important. And then we're like, oh, we're done. So let's clear the screen. So you can see there that I hit clear and then everything's kind of back to normal. And then you just, you just pull it, pull it back and ooh. Actually, you just hit exit if you want to continue to go through the presentation. So it's just a nice little presentation tool um, to kind of help you along. Now, the other way that we can engage the projector app is if we go to the projector DLP. So this is the built-in app uh, from Samsung about the projector. So if you have the focus and rotation, the quick pad, which I just showed you where we can write on presentations, uh, visual presenter is kind of a fun one, but it's actually kind of useless because it would actually project what it sees here. Now the problem is, is that the camera needs the light to pick up the image and the room needs to be dark in order for the projector to be useful. So you need to find some sort of weird happy medium. Um, yeah, I'm not completely sold on that one. If we could maybe... Okay, let's try that. Let's see, we try to turn the flash on, but then there's no light that stays. I don't know. You can try. You can try changing the brightness and exposure, bumping that up. But overall, I, I still think that there's a lot of work to be done um, on this on this application. It would be nice if the flashlight came on. So a little, a little more refining, I think, is in order there. So we also have an ambient mode, where you can choose your content. So we're going to choose a slideshow. All right. We can choose from our photos. 
So let's pick a couple of these ones, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one. Okay, then let's start. So I set it for one minute, and then you can kind of hear it here. There's some ambient music. I turned it down because it's pretty annoying. But you can actually choose to turn it up, but you can actually select your own files, so you don't have to choose their celebration background music. <laughs> All right. Now there's another feature here that's pretty neat. It's called torch light. So here we go. Let's turn that on. And then you can see there that it's blue. You can also choose red or green or white as a flashlight. Uh, they even have a blinking mode, so you can choose it to blink fast. Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of cool things that they've done with the projector, but um, overall I think it's a, it's a really interesting application. What I'm more curious about is, um, are they going to open the projector up so that we can have other people making some cool apps to access it? But, I mean, this is a new uh, niche product, so all that stuff is going to come in the future. So let's get back into uh, the review. The one thing that we would also like to figure out is what is the best way to secure the projector while you're using it? There's no stand, so you just kind of have to hold it or prop it with whatever's around. In my bedroom and living room, there were plenty of blankets laying around, so I didn't have a problem there. But it's going to be a little bit tougher in the boardroom where you're actually stuck holding it on that perfect piece of wall. But luckily, the area around the projector doesn't heat up that much, so I wouldn't be too worried about overheating the handset. One of the things that I couldn't help but think when I was using the phone is they put the projector on the wrong end. So I kind of feel like the projector should have gone on to the bottom. So that when I, let's, let's just turn it on. So I'll press the projector button. Uh, so I couldn't help but think that if I was on the phone, right, and I put the phone to my ear, I could be looking at documents if someone sent me something or looking at a map or I, a text message could come in and I could read it on the palm of my hand. I couldn't help but think that there's just so many more options for use um, if the projector was on the bottom. I mean, it really doesn't, I don't think, matter too much which time they put it on, but for when you're speaking, it actually does. So that's one of the things that I'm kind of excited to see what happens in the future with this uh, type of handset because once developers kind of start thinking and getting a hold of some you know, cool new ideas like this one, P.S. I'd like to see that. Um, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see the next generation. It's difficult not to compare the Beam to the Nokia PureView, strictly because both phones are in a niche market for enthusiasts. The PureView actually suffers from larger issues in the Beam. I thought it was bad the Beam was running Android 2.3, but the PureView is running Symbian. I mean, you really got to be a hardcore fan to pick up a phone with a dead OS. But the size of the PureView is 13.9 millimeters thick, not counting the part with the actual camera. The beam is 12.5, including the part with the projector. So I mean, comparably, the small end to the big end, the beam is, is kind of on par with the pure view. But I mean, the pure view actually is quite thick on the, on the camera end. So um, yeah, the beam really does come in a lot lower and a little more competitive than what the pure view would be. All in all, the Samsung Galaxy Beam offers good performance and battery life. It's not a high-end phone, but competing in the mid-range is a very solid choice. The only drawback is that it is a mid-range phone with a high-end price tag of between uh, 550 and 800 depending on your geography. But the thing is, if you picked up a comparable Pico Projector case, it would cost you around $200, which actually makes the phone a pretty good deal. It also comes with a large battery that will last you all day and you even get another one out of the box. It doesn't support the latest version of Android, which isn't a big deal because you still get pretty much all of the apps, but moving from ice cream sandwich to gingerbread will be kind of painful. Despite its weak software, the Samsung Galaxy Beam's bright projector pushes boundaries, and strong smartphone features make it a solid handset choice. I'm Nicole Scott for Netbook News.